All right, welcome back again on ISF 14 World Esports Championship Bali 2022 on the fire stage. We still have PUBG Mobile. So before I start the game or tag to the caster, I would like to give you some information. So this year's ISF 14 World Esports Championship 2022 followed by 106 countries with more than 600 athletes and 596 offline matches. So this is make this event as esports event with the most nationality competing offline and the largest outdoor esports competition in Southeast Asia. We have four marvelous stage here. We have Earth stage, Air stage, Ice stage, and of course here Fire stage. The six games include CS:GO, Dota 2, Mobile Legends Bang Bang, PUBG Mobile, the Football 2023, and Tekken 7. And also, uh, I, would like to I would like to tell you that this event can be held by support of our government sponsor. So thank you once again to Kemen Paragraph, Kemen Pora, Kony, NOC Indonesia, and Wonderful Indonesia. All right, guys, let us start this round. So I have to tag to the casters, two marvelous and beautiful ladies over there. Please welcome once again, Chuchu and Dono Fiska. Thank you so much, Mas Gary, or Brother Gary, or Mr. Gary, the amazing, the legendary host that we have for an entire day here. Yeah. And also, welcome back, ladies and gents, to the PUBG Mobile Division for the 14th World Esports Championship brought to you by IES 7. Chuchu is going to be Dona. But before we start, Dona, yep. I think every single time I cast, I have to clarify, it's mother and father father okay yeah. if yeah. you guys follow me long enough <laughs> you know i was in pop pop mobile since since the birth of its tournament mm -hmm. dpmco times it's i love my mom and dad okay yeah that's why i put them in my cast yeah actually yeah <laughs> because like we have to remember them every single time yeah. So mother and father. Yeah. If you yeah, want sister and brother, like why not? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Maybe that. I'll try. Maybe I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so Shushu, before we jump into the last game of uh, Group A, first let's see, this is gonna be like the last chance of Group A. Um, like usual, we're gonna have our prediction. What about you? Who you <sighs> rooting for this? this do we last have match? to do this every single time? Because yeah, you know, what? I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm. I, I love all the teams down there. Every single one of them have been amazing. Mm -hmm. But if I have to pick uh, right now, every single match will be different. So I think I might go with Pakistan this time. Pakistan? Because okay. they were they were trying to play hide and seek just now. It was oh, really right. cute, by the way. Oh, hide and seek in game. Yeah, you saw how they were in the middle yeah. of the open field. There's only one Shaq and Dako was just hiding there mm -hmm. as the Pakistan teams, mm -hmm. uh, all of them being decimated. Yep. I mean, like, in, in Sunhawk case, it's totally different. Now, who's your pick? You did the right pick in the previous Sunhawk. Are we having another Oracle moment coming up from you? I don't know, but I'm rooting for Senegal. It's more kind of like a supportive kind of Hey, you do believe in them? Senegal? No, I Can do you hear believe that? No, Juju, 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 Juju. That was nasty. Don't um, misread my. Uh, go into a different corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Don't go into a different corner. Yeah, so I believe. Senegal, yeah. I, I believe they still can. All they need to do is just yeah. change their mindset. That's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So especially in this last game, it's become because like Senegal is one of the teams or country that is uh, sitting in the Group A, right? Yep. So this is gonna be like their last chance. So take it or leave it, and they have to play all out for now. Or if they have any burden, it's not gonna be fun for them actually. Yeah, Just I'm have fun, actually. I ag I agree that mounting up pressure group A. Are you guys ready for your one last push when it comes to the flames group A? Do your diamond, make it or break it. We're gonna head into sign up very soon. But speaking of group A now versus C. Oh, see, do you have more chances later? Yeah, definitely, like, definitely, definitely. Because like they still got their three games ahead of them, and also, actually, speaking of Group C, they're gonna facing up against Group B for the last time. And Group B, uh, after like the day went by, uh, the countries in Group B is actually kind of a hard opening as well. 
Uh, I, I mean, like, the, I mean, like, for Group B and C, they still can change their destiny or fate or their future in the next couple of games. But for Group A right now, if they don't push this one last time, they have to bite their nails and wait if somebody will be pushed down or not. That's the worst part, waiting. Yeah. Waiting anxiously for somebody to make a mistake first. They don't garner enough points to, get, to be in the Grand Finals. Now, um, uh, we haven't seen a lot of the overall rankings so far for the Group A mm -hmm, seatings mm -hmm. by far. But I do want to know if there's any team barely make it to the 11th place or not. If they're being pushed down in the last minute, imagine how it feel for the Group A players. Yeah, I'm actually like looking on this. Pakistan is actually mm. one of them. Actually. And that's why we're really, voting for him. Yeah. <laughs> not really in the age of the leaderboard though. Not in the 11th or 10th position. But the gap points between like Pakistan and also the other teams below them, which is Libya, Vietnam and also Egypt or even Bahrain in the 12th position is uh, quiet uh, small small yeah no pressure no pressure pakistan mm, okay. just play and do your thing okay because right now we're gonna head over to our last map between a versus c and sunhawk let's go now, well, yeah, well, brunei. well all right brunei got their back-to-back -back winner winner chicken dinner for now is actually having a right mood from what I can see, especially with this kind of flight path. It parted quite equally in terms of all of the island inside of the Sunhawk itself. Yeah, a very even split between these two maps. And right now, not really two maps, it's one map split into two. And it's really in the center as well. So everybody can drop whatever they fancy. Always the bigger question is going to be where will the circle be? Because even though, but this is a very small map, we do know you can actually go by foot instead of just taking vehicles. You don't even need a vehicle. That's just how small Sunhawk is at the moment. But a couple of shots Oops. open up by the side of the boot camp. It's going to be on the Brunei's teams. But nobody's going to contest boot camp. I'm surprised. And this can be a tough circle. So we're going to have a circle circling all three islands. We have no clue if it's going to heart shift towards the right side, towards the mainland back or not. But the bigger chance is going to be the smaller islands on the left side. And it comprises around 40% of water ratio. Now that's going to be tough. Less places to run and hide for the teams. It's actually like kind of similar kind of uh, first circle from the previous half before. of that. Before. <laughs> yeah. Very, very similar. But I didn't really see a similarity be, uh, in terms of like a drop spot because in previous match we kind of see that Pinan is occupied but now I don't see that Pinan has been occupied by anyone now. Maybe that's going to be Baker. That's why they love Pinan a lot. But on mm. the side of Azerbaijan having a go against Egypt, Arthur now spotted out Sharif. That's going to be a really long shot across that window. There goes the nade being tossed around just to make sure it's going to be a warning grenade, making sure they won't actually enter the territory, but they're not taking it well for Egypt. And Star is still using a... Yeah, oh. he's right across him! Oh. oh, that's just really unfortunate inside of Azerbaijan. They couldn't leave the window exit out as fast as they can. The entirety of Calvary, Egypt taking this reign. Oh my God, but that was very, very fortunate for Egypt managed to take one man down but now Baku Baku managed to dodge the bullet away and managed to get one man down but trade knock has been happening between them Egypt and also team Azerbaijan now 3v3 situation I believe 3v2 situation between Egypt and also team Azerbaijan and Tail managed to take one more man down from Azerbaijan it's just a rough start for Azerbaijan having only two men playing around the corner and a ghost prime coming along with another member, their last player, last two players remains of the Azerbaijan. Well, Corona didn't have any utilities to reset himself. Ghost Prime spotted out Tahil, almost being knocked down entirely. Well, Corona already cooking up the nade at the other corner. Now they're trying to actually pressure Azerbaijan from moving forward. Now swapping over to the side of shotgun, but never mind. Still going to go with the UMP, making sure he can actually make space. But they need smokes right now for Azerbaijan to revive because Tahil will actually relay the information back to the side of a team. I don't think that works like that. It goes prime, but okay, he swap over to a DBS. Krona taking on GG boys. Now left with only two V1 for Azerbaijan player. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And Krona is gonna facing Ghost Prime. 
face to face one by one. But the other players of the and the other member from Egypt managed to revive the other team as well. And this is it. It's gonna be like two men suppressing the other compound, the inside of the compound, and tail is gonna be like facing the players from Azerbaijan one by one. One man down and the last man standing. Oh, oh. Gus Prime managed to take one trade knock for Egypt for now and Gus Prime still can manage to dodge the bullet away. Right in the face. Now have last first aid to actually be used by Goose Prime. Can he clutch this? Just gonna load up and ready, but Krona spot them out across and use the finish things off. Ghost Prime couldn't actually try to sustain the rest of the team, but heavy casualty for Egypt's side as well. And this is gonna be a lot of shotgun moments. Yeah, you go, Gyro. Finish off Guatemala, uh, Guatemala finish off the side of Senegal. It's not great for the start for four teams right now. Yeah, not a good start for them actually for now. But speaking of Azerbaijan, even though they are eliminated for now, they managed to take two elimination points. But um, Azerbaijan is actually in the team group A. Oh no, Zenos. Yeah. They definitely hurt his first steps. It's not great. You have to make sure he got himself down. Just slide down. This is not worth fighting for. He got himself a DB. Yes, he got one. But that's just it. Another team being decimated in the hands of Guatemala and defeated four. Four points gained by the side of a Guatemalan team. Cheo and the rest of the team got themselves an upgrade of loot as well. Once again, I'm sorry, Senegal. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I jinxed you all over again twice for that for today two times already but gg nice try for senegal and also azerbaijan because like both of them has been eliminated too soon for this match so it's kind of like a big match or a big war has been happening in the uh in the first five minutes it shows us that uh, those Azerbaijan and also Senegal tried to actually play it all out. Yeah. We can see they are very uncomfortable with their position just now. They are forcing themselves to get more aggressive, but it did work out even in the last map that they are playing right now. They are coming up from Group A. I think I am um, based on the scoreboard as well. Things are not working out well for them. So thank you so much for Azerbaijan and Senegal. That was a valid effort and we're looking forward to see you in the next one. But yep. stay tuned for more because it's Bali. They can have yeah. a bit of a rest and vacation time now. Yeah, actually enjoy Bali. Enjoy IESF World Esports Championship as it is because there are a lot of things to do, especially like Maldives now. There are a lot of things to do from Maldives, especially after taking two mains down. And I think, I believe that was from Guatemala, right? Yep. Oh, yep. Guatemala, and this is it. The pressure, the commitment, the aggression that has been building by players from Maldives. They're going to go for the rush here, try to flush out the rest of Guatemala players. Addy with the DBS already. Saiten awaited. The other end is doing the same thing here. The receiving end is just too hot being punished. But Maldives retaliated. It's going to be 3v2 as you're Guatemala only left with only two players. David and Che, you're on the high ground. Toxin with an M416 spotted out two of the players. Cheo got himself a buggy, but he need to bandaid himself at least. I'm not sure if they have any. They have none. They have no more yeah. utilities. They have no smoke, no hand grenade. What can they do if they're being rushed? They do have a couple of nades still on the side of Cheo. Mon, what a Kobe come up from Mother. They're climbing up the high heels here. Oh my God, there are no hesitation at all. That has been shown by Team Maldives, especially if they know. They are no in the last man standing only, but that David managed to take one man down from Maldives, giving Maldives some execution, but the Maldives managed to take David away, and just like that, Maldives got fourth elimination. Loving this Maldives performance, really. For the entire day, they've been stepping up their match, their game, giving us a different perspective of them, entirely different facet. But back to the side of Toxin and the rest of Maldives, now they need to reset themselves, having to reassess the situation and have another go for another run of PUBG Mobile. But the thing is, do they have the space though? Back to the side of Bruneians, they are spotting out, well, well, it's gonna be their nemesis, the arc nemesis again, towards the side of Saudi Arabia. But Piazza is always being the scouter, spotted out SK Tan in the previous match. SK Tan being eliminated quite early on. I hope it's not the same case here. 
But never mind, should we making sure SK Tan have to have another history repeating itself? Whoa, 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 that was such a beautiful shot coming from Team Brunei now. SK Tan bleeding out and just like that, SK Tan has been eliminated. On, uh, left with three men from now Saudi Arabia and it is like, such a calamity for them because one by one man has been knocked down especially with Shako position though he's put it out to or the rest remaining of the players from Saudi Arabia he got such a nice angle there yeah, I'm loving how Brunei is just, you know, what, pick and shoot and then hide again just mm -hmm. to make sure they didn't expose themselves too much regarding their position. But it was kind of a, it's still a very crispy spray coming up from them. It's quite a distance, if you ask me, around yep. almost 300 meters between them. And they still managed to secure a couple of eliminations here and there. But Dami have to just heal himself first to have another go against the Bruneians. And like it or not, they are not in an advantage right now for the Saudi Arabians because they're quite not having that, those elevations. They need to get up on the roof if they want to shoot against the Bruneians or they just build this one out. I think it's best for them to disengage for now. Things are not working their way. Yeah, especially if we're looking at the shift in terms of zone itself, it's not a really hardship in terms of the zone and both of the teams still has their moment and still has their spot. Only two teams that is not inside of the zone for the for this right moment. But this fight between Brunei and also Saudi Arabia is very, very interesting. Not, uh, not both of them is actually like bailing out of the war. Yep, and they are fighting between two islands. Yeah. We're talking about two different islands entirely. And they're still having a go. Saudi Dami definitely not happy regarding their losing as on quite early on. They tried to redeem his death. On the side of Jordan, on the other hand, this is going to be a bit of a cruising day for Leith. He got himself some motorbike to hike on. And for the rest of Maldives, didn't even realize he's here around. The I think they got some sort of idea what's happening on the other side. They definitely heard footsteps. They definitely heard a movement coming up from Jordan's. But they are not revealing themselves yet. So Maury is not really satisfied. He's definitely spotted Asawi. There goes, giving back the information towards the rest of the team. He's having trigger discipline. Better not open fire because the Jordans have no whatsoever information about the Maldives players so far. Yeah, also Ratnarok has been spotted down by Marie. Two men already, but Ratnarok, oh, no. I believe, has been shot down, but none bullets has been connected to Ratnarok itself and because of that Jordan has no has the information about the opponent about the enemy which is team Maldives position oh here it comes trying to just counter-attack the side of Jordan's Mori definitely regretted his decision almost yeah. entirely clipped his helmet there got a couple of headshots coming up from the other end of Jordan now Saudi definitely still having a go against the Bruneians now they are not living this yeah by far. I mean, like both teams wanted to secure this as much and as long as they can. They are quite in the center of a circle still. We might end up on top of boot camp. So they're trying to yeah. secure and build their defense along the way. But Sawi finally take down Omori. Even Omori got the information first, but the Jordans are not sitting quietly. They are ambushing and pushing it in. Oh my God. Team Maldives successfully fishing and Team Jordans but. I think you got a very big opponent here because Team Jordan don't really have any hesitation to really pressing in to be colliding into the defensive area of Team Maldive. And the rest of the players from Team Maldive is went away, only leave with a math, I think, inside of the house yes I, I don't know if they have any clue Lace definitely feels like he needs to check inside of the building now if Moth can actually surprise this one it's gonna be huge for the side of the oh Moth he was looking at different angle entirely he heard the first steps beforehand he should have had everything prepared by the book oh my god the miscalculation the mistiming that Mad had cost him alive and uh, the opponent is Leith, the monster, the if MVP. He, if he actually shot down Leith, yeah. that's going to be huge coming up for Maldiv. He yeah. got the angle perfectly fine. Yeah. All he needs to do is just wait in front of that door. Yeah. That's it. But he had to swerve around to the left side and that yeah. just whiffed it so much and 
not enough time for him to recover. And the start of Maldives, they're definitely going to play it very, very safe as they only remain with one player. Egypt have two. But for a side of Saudi, still have two. You do know that Saudi, even there's one player, including Jordan. Mm -hmm. Equivalent to still entire squad, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like, these are the teams that yeah. even it's one person, you should take them down. Yeah, actually. But talking about Maldives, though, if if Mad actually managed to take Leith down, eliminated, that's just huge. Yeah, it's a huge cost for Jordan and stuff because we can remember that Leith is a playmaker, one of the playmaker, one of the big star coming from Jordan. But the zone though is shifting towards the Southeast area. Still with Saudi Arabia and also I believe it was Brunei yeah Brunei inside of the circle within the different island as well and I believe both Brunei and also Saudi Arabia is gonna like having um, some quiet time to really garden up their back line but in the meantime, they are not staying inside of a boot camp. This is smart coming up from the mm -hmm. Bruneians because why they do know that a lot of players will try to be in the center of boot camp. They got themselves on the outskirts and get themselves the elevations right on the outside of boot camp still. But the thing is, they try to go up towards the side of Saudi Arabia who actually been firing them across the island. So they want to actually gatekeep Saudi in case they are trying to swim over towards the side of boot camp. Yep. Unless if Saudi actually try to part ways in a different direction entirely. That's actually a smart move. Try yep. to avoid all the unnecessary fights during this time. Yeah, but speaking of avoiding, could one of the players from Pakistan avoiding the open fire that is going to be due by Team Egypt because they have a nice choke point here, guarding up the breach area, but... I think that one of that Pakistani player doesn't want to cross the bridge. It's not a really good idea to cross the bridge, uh, especially alone. I mean, like they can swim over. I feel like swimming is actually a safer route than you actually compare with the bridge at yep. the moment. Yep. But unless I mean, like if they got some vehicles, like yeah, maybe, but not so much. We do you know Sano is too small vehicles. Yeah, it would be great to work with, but there's so many teams cram into a very small circle so it's really a risky thing to do back to a side of a uh, ghana shy boy still have all four men but sri lanka doom left with only still four players yep. but they are nearby towards each other now doom try to scout things out to us all the rest of the team now he's pruning down try to be as quiet as possible try to be a ninja oh, here oh. but is that he from him? No, it's definitely coming uh, up from Ghana's uh, side. Okay. But the thing is, that's a lot of information coming up from uh, towards the side of Sri Lanka. That's definitely value for them. We do have Pakistan team just joining in from behind. Oh, no. Oh, boy. It's going to be a three-way war here, Donna. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, but Sri Lanka don't manage to take one. Not only one, but two men down. And only who left with air pain. He got some painful now that caused him some life. And just like the Pakistan, uh. didn't notice that, didn't expect that Sri Lanka is there. I mean, like, we shouldn't vote for any teams after yeah. this. It feels <laughs> like we're really, really making it bad Ouch. luck for them for the entire day. But actually, like, it, it it's kind of like a uh, fortunate thing for Sri Lanka because, like, yeah. they're only, like, three men behind, right? Yeah. Because, like, Doom is counting the way for the other teammates to into the circle itself. But uh, because, like, if Pakistan actually, like, ready to make a war or to initiate a war between them and also Sri Lanka, it's going to be like a very hard situation for S Sri Lanka as well. Yeah, it's kind of true. They might actually be centered in the center of the, you know, the crossfire. Yep. But just now we saw the circle shift again. It's going to be towards Pine Nan. Now, nobody was in Pine Nan like you mentioned earlier, Donan. Yep. It was supposed to be a couple of teams when it comes to Group B, but in this case, it's totally different. Back to the side of Saudi, they are running across ruins, not crossing straight into boot camp because they know the Bruneians are waiting, they're gatekeeping them. That's really an ingenious move coming up from the Saudi Arabians. But the thing is, they need to cut across towards Pine Nan. It's going to be a lot of death toll for teams that still hasn't crossed towards Pine Nan at the moment. And Jordan, for now, is going to occupy Pine Nan's area.
And I believe like Jordan is the one, one of the team is actually having a territory in Pinan, right? In the previous games. True. Yeah. And then they come back to their hometown for now. Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka is hunting them down, is around the Pinan area, trying to search for the nicest position or spot here. And Brunei as well is uh, spotted by us now. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Jordan. I think it was Libya and also ah, Mauritius before. Okay. So Jordan happened to pass by. So in this case, I'm surprised why Libya didn't take Pine because That's it was why. quite empty. But back to the side of Sri Lanka. Dude, but not shy. He was unaware and straight away being shot down, translate into one point as an easy execution coming from Doom. It's going to be having a good day and a good run coming up from Sri Lanka. They already got themselves five eliminations in the bag. Now, yep. it's definitely just having a go and keep the momentum up. They might actually try to pin down the entire team of Ghana right across them. Yep, yep, yep. Sri Lanka, this is it. This is their moment. And they adding up more knockdown for them. And this is like going to boost up their... Um, Vibes as well, boost up their mental as well. Especially one of the players is from Jordan, but Amaredo also being knocked down now. And I think it's gonna be like a hard position for Amare to be saved. Yep, this is gonna be Spama, the tallest player in, in the lineup of Ghana just now. Yep. Spama and Nel and Mufasa, both, all three of them actually indoors and nobody trying to scat what's happening outside. Nobody gonna, gonna go for the flank side. Mufasa tried to finish off Amare, but the smoke's really making it hard for them, but he's bleeding out. Hazen couldn't jeopardize his position just to save his teammate. It's not worth it for now. As Ghana still have their eyes out, they're trying to scout anybody that climbing up, climbing down the, the hills there. But Amare still managed to actually close into as a side of Hazen, so it yep. will be safe. I'm not sure if they have enough time yet as more teams coming into the center of Pinan and the circle will shrink even further anytime now. Oh my God, and Pinan is gonna be the place where we're gonna see a bunch of big fighters coming in because like the half of the circle is Pinan area, but Hazendo has been spotted down by Smama. But some of the bullets not connected towards uh, himself. I'm waiting who's behind Ghana actually yeah. try to creep in, in, slowly try to backstab them. That's definitely only one player left. Maybe Maldive, possibly. I'm not sure. But here comes, it's going to be Doom. Now, Doom is going to be the Doom of the side of Ghana if they didn't realize where he's at. And they are quite in a position for Doom. I'm not sure where are the rest of Sri Lanka players. Yeah. But they are very separated right at the moment. Piazza coming up from Brunei, just going to make sure they can blow up the tyres. Taking out on Sarawi from a side of Libya. Chiwi, Piazza and now Nubi coming out on different angles in Dali. Trying to take them out instantaneously. But one shot and Barty trying to get away. Doom making sure they were trying to shoot down on one, but so close. The blue zone closing in. Doom, he could get even one. Oh, this must be devastating for Doom. Oh. God, and Ghana, Ghana, Ghana managed to save themselves up and managed to touch down in the compound area inside of Pinan. And this is going to be like a very hard situation for Sri Lanka, but they managed to take one knockdown to Nel Hazen. Though Hazen, I think, is going to be left out, bleeding out. Yep, there's no way for the side of Sri Lanka can actually save him. He is in the middle of a crossfire, unless... Susti can make it out alive and try to save in a longer process. He still managed to take it on Gaga. Susti trying to actually make a comeback from behind. Doom managed to squeeze in at the last minute towards the safe zone. Now Ragnarok taking on Susti. Now this is going to be a bit of a problem. They don't have anybody on the back line for Sri Lanka anymore. Yeah. They have only one player running around the corners. And this is going to be a tough one. While the rest of the team will still have Egypt and Maldives still playing in the blues. And while Jordan trying to just gatekeep everybody who's trying to come in into Pinan. Yeah, and this is gonna be like a very challenging type of circle as Pinan is like crowded by players and also by the building itself. So a lot of angle need to be working in by the players itself. As I talk that, Egypt has been eliminated out of the game by Brunei Darussalam. Sawi just gonna boost himself out. Ragnarok needs help. Chewie, take it on Dami. 
And it's going to be Sawi trying to toss out Nanit, but he missed just within seconds. And it's going to be 2v1! Sawi being Kobe by Shaco! Shaco going to finish things off! Jordan losing one more man here! They're losing the fortress! We're down to five teams! The Bruneites, are they going to do it again? They have four players still, while Jordan's down to two. Saudi down to one. Where are the others? Oh it's going to be domination coming out from the Bruneians here! Oh my god, Brunei or Salam! Doing it again, do this thing again. And Newbie is gonna be hunting down players from Jordan. They got their confidence now, even though like one man down, but they still inside of the building to really eliminate it one by one of their enemy. Newbie tried to hold on to us two teams against him. It's gonna be Jordan versus only. It's gonna be taken out by now. This is a big time for Brunei. Nobody spawned them out. They might actually be winning this again. Now take it out late. One of the biggest star players for Jordan. Sri Lanka and Jordan down to only one. It's gonna be 3v3, 3v1, v1. Mufasa and the rest of the team of Ghana. Can they make their chicken right here, right now? Or will the Brunei crush their dreams again? Oh my God, but on the other side, Ragnarok as the last man standing from Jordan managed to take one man down from a team Ghana. But not only one, Woo! Spama is also being the being consulted by the other uh, team as well. Shaco makes such plays. So many Kobe's in the last moment here. Shaco tried to push forward. Here comes the off by Doom. Try to flush out the rest of the other teams, but that's going to be now in the struggle. Shaco on the lower ground. Newbies and the rest trying to hop out from the window. Doom tossing up random nades. It's just next to each other. Oh, around the corner. Doom making his Doom not alive this time. Oh my God. Bruna and Darusala. Bruna, Bruna, Bruna. Shaco with the DPS gaming eliminated the entire team and only. Ragnarok left from Team Jordan Woo! and he cannot make a clash against Team Brunei. Back to back to back. The match between A versus C. All of it secured by Brunei Darussalam. What a play. What a play. Oh I have to God. say, I give it to Brunei. I'm in like three games in a row. Hat trick again. The Brunei is here. They're stomping off the yacht. What a game just now. And they were remarkable. How that, how can that happen? It's gonna be ABC. There's only Brunei. There's only one team <laughs> fighting A versus C now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. But this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The players from Brunei Darussalam really enjoying this moment, enjoying their move movement. Especially, this is like the last series they played. After this, they're gonna take some rest and get ready into the grand final tomorrow because I believe Brunei is qualified already after these kind of games. <laughs> it's all about the, <laughs> the, the, the flex plays here. Yeah. The same goes for Saudi Arabia. They have been tapping since the start against the Saudi Arabia team. And they got themselves that chicken. They got the moment that they actually taking the spot where to go, how they navigate around the map. The timing, the judgment, it's just incredible coming up from the Bruneians. I have to say, even though they were in, in the bootcamp earlier, mm -hmm. they get out of bootcamp, they know what might happen if they stay in there. And they might actually dig in their own grave. They know exactly where to stand with the timing provided and the circle pops. And also the way they just stay in the corner, they surprise so many teams by doing that. Yeah, and did you remember, Chuchu, Chuchu in the uh, in the starting uh, in the early of the day for today we kind of like questioned where is Brunei where is Brunei especially like the yesterday first day. The, yeah, first the first day. day or yesterday especially yeah. like the second day and yeah thankfully they show us what they got still they show us their power still here intact with them you know what? I talked to the uh, one of the Brunei's presidents of Isabel Asso Association before. He mm -hmm. called us him. Mm -hmm. If you guys actually know him, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. you know why, right? Yeah, <laughs> he is actually. But speaking of which, he mentioned earlier today that um, one of the players don't really um, have the same mentality as they were in, this, in the first day. Oh, they really? had a bit of a devastation moment. They have a bit of a breakdown. They have a hard time to reset. And I think they really pushed forward this time. They really oh, yeah. racked things up. They, you know what? It was Piazzao who ah. actually having a bit time, a hard time to actually, you know, adapt to the situation. Oh, really? But right now we can't even see that's happening. It's just look at how they perform. Piazzao is actually like for today, especially he is the star of the show. 
That's true. From I what mean, I can say. It's just as a team, even Shaco. Yeah. I think Shaco is actually leading for the entire mm -hmm. team of mm -hmm. Brunei. But look at the elimination. It's always not. And yet, last match, it was nine as well. Oh, yeah. All right, then. It's good for Brunei and Ursalem. It's not, it's not the same uh, graphic, guys, actually. <laughs> it's not the same graphic. But, it's not. But the graphic designer team back there is actually having some uh, uh, good time. Because, like, he or she didn't really need some effort to change anything in this match rankings because like silver Niders, like non-elimination point yes good for them and um speaking of in terms of elimination point i can see that the um the elimination point total is really parted equally for all of the team for almost all of the team yeah you can't say all now there's no. a couple of zeros down no. there i mean like okay no way. <laughs> <laughs> just pretend we didn't see that yeah close our eyes <laughs> <laughs> and for sri lanka they still have almost double digit no teams having double digit this round yeah. last match even though brunei has got themselves um nine eliminations still but i think it was maybe uh one of the team either jordan or saudi arabia got themselves 11 eliminations so this time they don't have anybody with double digit so it's not too dominating it's just the circle make it so hard for the players yeah. to predict which island should they stand on I actually remember the previous match uh the, the early minutes of the game when saudi arabia ups uh, facing ups against uh team brunei Oh, yeah, really? Like Travel distance? Enough, uh, yeah. I mean, like, no, yeah. no way. No way. No way. <laughs> they didn't even move, but they got the ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they doing, actually? I mean, okay, this is sometimes a bit of a, you know, a bit of a glitch when it comes to the KPI. So yeah. they definitely move quite a number of it for travel distance, uh, even though. They are very close. They're starting off boot camp. They have to yeah. run down to its final. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely distance in between. So it's just a bit of a glitch in the KPI. So it's not on the production team side problem. It's just a thing sometimes happens with yep. the glitch. But yep. for the other teams, though, Jordan really had a go here. Yeah, actually, 3,300 something meter travel distance for them. Total damage is all is also like a hundred something. Trouble use now seventy seven, and I can see from Chewy yeah. the longest distance elimination point, and I believe. Let me check about. This uh, is the is one. No, no, no. Oh. The longest is actually four hundred over that yeah, we had yeah, yeah. previously. But this is where they actually fought against the Saudi Arabia team, where Chewy knocked down and finished off straight away one of the player, yeah. uh, SK Tan. Yeah, that so was. this is the distance. Yeah, the difference islands distance yeah. that we saw <laughs> three hundred seventy <laughs> meters, and I'm really glad that. This is the longest distance elimination in San Hock. In San Hock, yeah. Yeah. In San Hock. yeah. If not Chewy got this, I'm quite upset. <laughs> yeah, because like what else? So yeah, this is it. Overall rankings for today. Saudi Arabia still is the king of overall rankings with 300 over total points, and also Brunei 239. Now this oh. is really risky for the side of Bahrain and Korea. They still can catch up though, especially Bahrain and Korea are in Group B. So the one that actually should be worried is going to be Vietnam, who's still in Group B, so it's okay for them. But the yeah. one that's going to be in Group A though, they are not happy if they ended up here. We're talking about, let's look at, where is Sri Lanka? Sri yeah. Lanka is, is at actually six. six. So yeah. whoever on the top and uh, that fifth place until the eleventh is still not safe because uh, most of them standing there is going to be Group B and C. Yeah, but, but this is it, ladies and gentlemen. MVP of the match, Chewy. Chewy, not from Indonesia, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Chewy. Oh, you got a dimple. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, Chewy. You deserved it a lot. Congratulations of becoming the MVP of the match. Yeah, Chewy, you're Indonesian now. Just saying. <laughs> Welcome to Indonesia, Chewy. <laughs> hey, he's having a good time. There goes yep. the rest of the Brunei teams. You can see they are so pumped up right now. And that was the last match for Group A. So, yep. Libya, Senegal, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Brunei, Azerbaijan, and Sri Lanka is done. Yeah, it's done. And we are going to see the last series of today, which is going to be uh, Group B facing up against Group C in just a moment. So I'm really glad that this game, this last series, going to be the judgment of all. Uh, the judgment I mean, like, of if all. you're Group B and C, you'll mm. be happy. 
because yeah, you still have I a am. shot. But yeah. Group A, though, they are like sitting and biting their nails at the sidelines, hoping nobody can get double digit elimination plus a chicken. If yeah. that happens, they will be pushed down in the last minute and they can't do anything about it. Yeah, but and also, especially with the performance that we saw earlier from South Korea. Bahrain, Chinese Taipei, and, e and even Vietnam. It's uh. gonna be like ooh, a nightmare from tea, uh, oh. from team in group. Ah, we we yeah. are having a lot of chewy moments. Yeah, yeah. chewy. Here you go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a look at yourself. Screenshot this. Show it to your to your family. The the, the <laughs> remake of the flag. The remake of the flag. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. We got it right this time, Chewy. Yeah. You're Brunei. Okay, Chewy. I think you're happy right now. Definitely is happy, but this is not the most damage we've mm. seen by far more play. I think yeah, that's actually. still the highest. Still taken out by Lace with 1,700 oh. damage by one person, 12 elimination by himself. That was some craziest moment that we witnessed in this <laughs> stage, in this uh, group stage. And I believe that that kind of rec record it's not going to be like easy to break on. Uh, it's still, uh, still too early, though, okay. because we still haven't got the grand finals. Where, in case you guys haven't got a clue, the grand finals still have five more teams to go. One of in. them being Indonesia, of yes. course. Yeah, so I do have a list here. It's going to be Kazakhstan, uh, Indonesia, Morocco, Brazil, and Turkey. And now these five teams, it's going to be world class player as yeah, well. Yeah, actually, PMG is a grand finalist. Oh my god. Oh. By the way, speaking about PMG the grand final, the ticket sale is open now. Oh, yeah. are you buying me one? <laughs> yeah, I will give it away for you. Yeah. You need to come later, Choo Choo. But it's Mr. Gary will be yeah. coming over for BMG. You see, Mr. Gary, you're coming over. Toss it back to our host, Mr. Gary. All right. Thank you once again, Donna and Choo Choo and Nanda. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. The Brunei Darussalam and another MVP got by them. Oh, this is makes the game. It will be so, so intense after this. And like usual, we have a commercial break after this. But another question about Ayam to my Indonesian fellow over there. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Kalau kucing jadi ayam, sapi jadi ayam, gajah jadi ayam, ayam jadi... Betul sekali. Kalau kucing jadi ayam, sapi jadi ayam, gajah jadi ayam, ayam jadi ayam jadi banyak. Still on ISF 14 World Esports Championship. Don't go anywhere.